negative eight x and y when two numbers from this set are picked and multiplied what's the probability that the product is less than zero so one is that x times y is not equal to zero and then the what is that x the mod value of x modulus oh. value the absolute Isn't value of oh, okay yeah, absolute value of x is equal to the absolute value of y. Ah, in shortcut, we can say that x mod is equal to y mod. So we will explain this okay. all. We have already uh, talked about these modulus values that they are either negative or positive. So they will come the equal. So the question is very simple in the sense and also interesting. But we can say, uh, let uh, A is a set, so 2, 4, 6, minus 8, x, y. When the two numbers from this set, two number, what I mean to say, uh, these are the distinct number. Distinct mean there is no repetition of the numbers and uh, from this yeah. set are picked when only two numbers at random are picked and multiplied and then the operation is multiplication. What is the probability that the product, uh, product is less than zero? So less than zero mean that must be negative. What I mean to say, that we have the one negative number x and y, we are not sure about that. The product is not equal to zero. This is the first statement and the absolute values are both the unknown x and y, they are equal. So we are looking for the, what I mean to say probability. And before the probability, we will have to look at the characteristics of all these numbers. So the properties of the numbers, we'll talk about that. So this is all about the question. I'm sure that there should not be any ambiguity or any doubt regarding this statement of the question. Is there any? Yeah, I get what the question is asking. Like, okay. Uh, yeah. So the uh, question is asking very clearly the probability that the product of any randomly selected two numbers is negative. So what is that probability? We will have to calculate that probability. So this is all about the question. So we will keep this question uh, all the time in our mind. We will see this, uh, we will keep it at the top of our slides and uh, time again and again, we will look at this. So, okay. Okay. So uh, the question is as it is, no need to read, read that question. This is the repetition. So we are keeping that at the top that we should look at that. Now the first question is, what do we have to find out? Is for uh, you. If we pick if we pick two random numbers, what's if like what's the probability that the product is less than zero? Okay, that is negative. The probability is negative. Anyhow, what do we have to find? So uh, we have to find the probability that the product of two numbers picked from set A is negative. Absolutely, that was your answer. So what we have to do? So once again, the question is same over here. Uh, we will have to start off from what do we have to find? So we have to find this one, crystal clear. Uh, what does that mean? What does that mean? Uh, question is you want me you. to read that or? Okay, so. Yes, you can read or you can talk okay, about. Okay, sure. Well, it's pretty much just saying that if two random uh, numbers are, what do you call it? Like multiplied, they should be equal to like a negative number. Oh yes, we need to determine one thing that is when will the product of two numbers to be negative? When yeah, the first is the product must be negative, and then we'll talk about the probability. So this is question is actually two in one. What I mean to say that first we will have to locate the numbers, uh, their product must be negative. And then we will have to calculate the probability, the chances of happening, how many chances to get this type of the product from the selected set at random. So this is all about what we can say. The next is, let's see. So the problem is there. We have a very crystal idea what to get and how to get it. So this is the way we are just going to do. Okay, so if you can read this. Okay, when will the product of the two numbers be negative? 
product of the two numbers is negative when one of the numbers is positive and the number other number is negative. Oh yes, this is the only possible way. So uh, we are looking for the two numbers. Uh, what I mean to say when we are multiplying the product is negative. And this can be only possible when the product of two numbers is negative, when, when, and if and only if, then one of the number is positive and the other is negative. So, but we are looking for the two numbers. So we will have to select at least one positive number and one negative number. Then we can get the product negative. So this is all about that. So next is, what is the next step? So please read this one. Okay, so uh, we need to determine one, how many of the given numbers are positive and how many are negative? Oh yes, absolutely right. So we are restricted to select those uh, two numbers from the given set. And uh, all the dis uh, elements are distinct of the given set. So how many of you? So we'll have to ask, we'll have to locate that how many numbers are negative in the given set and how many are positive. So uh, this way, we can get the, what I mean to say, all the possibilities that uh, how many numbers are negative because uh, yeah. one must be the negative number when we are getting the product negative. So we will have to locate yeah. all those negative numbers uh, with the given conditions, with the given sets because two numbers are unknown, X, Y. So we'll have to take care of them that what should be those numbers with the given condition. Now the next step is, right. please read from here. Okay. How many of the given numbers are positive and how many are negative? We know for sure that three of these numbers are positive. Oh yes, we know for sure that three of these numbers are positive because set is given and uh, we can see also, we know that one of these number is negative. Okay, minus eight is given. So. Uh, without talking about the X and Y, uh, the crystal, what we can say, the clarity is that the three numbers, the first three numbers are, which are given in their numerical form, they are the positive, then there is a negative number, then there is, uh, what we can say, there are two X, Y numbers. We don't uh, sure about that, that whether they are negative or positive. Anyhow, we know that one of these numbers is negative. The three right. positive and the one number is negative. Uh, we yeah. don't know whether X and Y are positive or negative because X and Y are not given with their numerical values. Yeah. So positive numbers, please read this box. Sure. Positive numbers are two, four, and six, which is three numbers. Then negative numbers are um, neg negative eight, which is just one number. Oh, yes. And then not known as X and Y, uh, which is two numbers. Two numbers. So this is all about the elements of the given sets. So we'll have to select at random the two numbers to get the product negative. So what we can say that these are the positive three numbers, so only the negative number is minus eight, and we are not sure about these two. So we'll have to talk about these two X and Y. Wait, if these uh, are... are you muted? Where's that 15? Yes. Hold on, let me try fixing this. Hello, what are you saying? Um, please, please ask what you are saying. Wait, uh, could you say something? No, no, no. I'm not saying anything. Uh, I'm just explaining this one. So if there is ambiguity or there is a question at the at this time, so you please ask first that. Is there any question? Are you getting this? My voice is not coming or any problem? Hello? Wait, can you say something so I can see if I can hear you? Uh, your voice is clear. Am I audible to you? Am I audible? Am I audible to you? Am I audible to you? Hello? Wait, could you? Oh, there we go. I don't know what happened. I thought it was like your voice just cut out for me. Uh, right. No, am I audible? 
Yeah, yeah, I can. Okay, hear you. okay. So we should continue this. Is there any ambiguity? Yeah. Uh, sure. So. Oh, no, uh, yeah, I got it. So okay, the two, three positive number, one negative number, and two numbers. We are not sure about that. So, uh, what we'll have to do the next step is, please read this box. Sure. Okay. What does the question finally boil down to? Determine whether x and y are both positive or both negative. Both negative or one positive and the other negative or both zeros. Yes. So the only possibilities about this unknown box is that uh, x, they may be positive and y is also positive. And the possibility is also there that they can be negative numbers and uh, they can also be zeros. One of them is zero, both are zeros. One is negative, one is positive. So these are all the possibilities. What does the questions finally boil down to? Determining. So we'll have to find out uh, what is the nature of uh, what we can say X and Y. So this is the main point of the question, the climax. Now let's see. Uh, statement one, if we are just going to what we can say, analyze the, right. what I mean to say, look at this, that uh, let us evaluate the statements. The first statement is that the product, here star is for the product, for the sign of multiplication. That X uh, multiplied by Y, that must not be equal to zero. It must not be equal to zero. This is the first statement. Then okay. it is evident that uh, neither X nor Y is zero. So if the product is not zero, so they must not be equal to zero. So uh, we are just eliminating this, that X and Y both must not be equal to zero or, and uh, also none of these must be zero because the chances of zero is elimination. They, right. the X cannot be zero, Y also cannot be zero because this is the given condition that their product must not be equal to zero. That is a statement. So next is, it is evident that they, neither uh, X nor Y is zero. What could X and Y therefore be? What could, so X and Y could both be positive. This is a possibility. X and Y could both be negative because they cannot be zero. One of right. X and Y could be positive and the other negative. So we have these three possibilities, positive, right. both negative, and any one of uh, these X and Y may be negative and positive alternatively. Did we get an right. answer? So from here, after reaching this conclusion that there are three possibilities for X and Y, which are unknown, which are not given in numerical form. So did we get an answer? So this is the question now. Uh, we could not find out uh, how many of the six numbers are positive and how many are negative. Right. Because uh, uh, we have seen over there, the three numbers are positive, one is negative, and we are talking about these X and Y. So yeah. statement one is not sufficient. What I mean to say, if this statement is given and we are just going to solve that question, this statement is not true, not sufficient. Am I right? Are you getting this? Right. It's uh, all about yes. the data sufficiency. So this is the one of the statement right. out of those four. Uh, once again, I'm repeating here that the typical format of the statements is that uh, the one is possible, the statement, the uh, all alone, two, out of two statements, the one is sufficient, the second is sufficient, both are sufficient, neither the both are sufficient, one is this and second is this. So, so these are all those alternately conditions. So those yeah. uh, sufficiency, what we can say statements. So out of these two. So first is not sufficient because 
uh, we cannot uh, find the numbers when their product is net zero because we are not sure about their nature that they could be positive yeah. both we are not sure if they are positive so we can uh, we will get the statement true if the two numbers positive numbers are multiplying the product at not equal to zero if we are considering this one this option that both are negative so once again the product is positive and this is not equal to zero and the third one possibility is that if uh, either of these x and y positive or negative alternatively so once again we cannot uh, have a value that is not equal to zero definitely the product will be negative and that is not equal to zero so all these right. conditions are fulfilling and this cannot be possible at the same time that we are getting we are supposing all these things are happening simultaneously that cannot be possible so this statement is not sufficient <clears throat> okay so statement okay. one is not sufficient so forget, forget about that that if you the only one statement is given then we can proceed further because uh, this is not sufficient in the sense that uh, one can select this one can decide that both are positive okay uh, but we are not given that these are the positive one can say both are negative right we are, uh, there is no idea we are not sure about that that we should take these two numbers as a negative and one more thing is that one is positive and negative alternatively so we are not sure about that so we will have to get some sporting argument where we can say on this basis we can we will have to decide about these three out of these three possibilities so uh, if we are right. just considering only one statement so all the possibilities are there but uh, at the same time only one should must be there uh, the, the x and y both positive or both negative or one is negative or positive all the conditions are at the same time cannot be justified that either you are saying positive or negative at the same time and both are positive and one is negative and this so uh, there is ambiguity that what is the clear cut statement so statement one is right. not sufficient after uh, this argument and looking all these uh, things which are given in these possible ways so we can say that we cannot get the answer so the uh, right. solution is all the time different so somebody can take positive the other one is uh, taking negative both are negative one can consider y is negative and the fourth one can consider y is negative or whatsoever so this uh, statement one is not true not holds true not is sufficient for the further solution yeah. so we will have to look <clears throat> what choices can be eliminated now we are just going to if the statement one is not true not sufficient so we are just going to elimination rule that elimination rule is what choices can be eliminated choice a statement one alone is sufficient can be ruled out so the statement one all alone is uh, all alone is not sufficient so choice is d yeah. a mean that uh, what once again i am just going to visualizing you that the a b c d these are the four statements in a sense that uh, the statement one is sufficient for the solution the statement two that is sufficient both are sufficient one and two are sufficient either one okay. uh, uh, is sufficient either uh, this so these are the different option so from here we can say out of those choices uh, we have seen in so many questions those choices are also shown to you but anyhow choice a that choice a was that is a mcq type of the question choice a was statement one alone is sufficient can be ruled out okay okay now choice d each statement is independently sufficient can also be ruled out independently mean that we have the two statement the second statement was x mod is equal to y mod so these okay. two uh, choices are eliminated that independently if we are considering the second statement is true sufficient for the solution is a rule out 
because we are not sure about the x and y, so their modulus values are always equal. So these A and D, we have B, C and E. Let's see. So let us evaluate statement two. That first we have talked about all these possibilities. We have the three options over there. And statement second is that X mod is equal to Y mod. The modulus value, the absolute value of X is equal to the absolute value of Y. So let's see. The magnitude of X is the same as that of Y. So what I mean to say, when we are talking about the absolute value, so at the end, the answer must be the same. Am I right? Are you getting this? Right. So this is the mathematical yeah. meaning of this. The magnitude of X is the same as that of Y. But I mean to say that may be negative or positive. Anyhow, we will get the absolute value. That absolute value is, uh, we are using the distance. Let's suppose whatsoever the points are in negative coordinates or whatsoever the at the end we will get the measurement positive the age is also positive okay okay so these are the ways that absolute the magnitude is always positive by using these absolute one thing is the second is what could x and y therefore be so the magnitude is same if their magnitude are same so what is the possibility x and y could both be positive for example, seven and seven. So if you are taking the absolute value of seven uh, and y is also seven, so both be positive. This is the first possibility that these must be positive. Then we can equate right. their absolute value. The magnitudes are also equal. The second possibility is that x and y could both be negative. So as we know right. that just to get the magnitude positive, we will have to put this uh, mod. So if you are calculating right. somewhere, uh, the distance between the two points and they are lying somewhere where the negative coordinates are there, but distance is always positive. So the negative number is put it as an absolute value. So you can recall right. the distance formula. The best example is the distance formula. Although the coordinates are giving us the negative value, but uh, distance cannot be negative. We will have to put it absolute. So if both are negative, once again, we are getting the magnitudes equal, absolute values equal. The another okay. option is uh, one of X and Y could be positive and the other negative. For example, X is seven, Y is minus seven. And they must be equal, equal in the sense that uh, the ab their absolute values are equal, then their uh, numerical value must be equal, irrespective of their sign, because X mod is equal to Y mod. And that can only be possible that if X and Y are equal, irrespective of the sign, they mo both be positive, they both be negative, and uh, X is positive and Y is positive, whatsoever the case is. But whenever we are putting these, so their numerical values must be the same. Their magnitude is the same. So here we can say this is the seven magnitude plus seven. And this is the magnitude is seven, but it's a negative. Direction may be opposite, but magnitudes are same. Seven and seven, minus seven okay. and plus seven. These are equal because their magnitudes are equal, although the direction or the right, sign is right. negative. Yeah. So, uh, this possibility will make this true. Now let's see. Okay. Both could be zero. Uh, one possibility is that look at this. The statement one was saying that their product must not be equal to zero. And here we can put zero. We can consider also zero because the mod of zero is right. zero. The y is zero. So this statement is also true. But in the statement first, if you can recall that statement, that was their product must not be equal to zero. So from there, we have that uh, these X and Y both not be zero or not anyone, even any one of these must not be zero. Just to fulfill the first statement that their product must not be equal to zero. Product is not zero. So here we okay. have this choice also that both could be zero. But one thing is, 
that if you can recall the statement of the question that these are distinct. If you are considering these, these are not distinct because these are same. If you are considering this option, once again, these are not distinct number. And if you are considering this, these are the distinct number. Are you agree with this? That minus yeah. seven and plus seven are distinct element of a set. These are the distinct. Yeah, that sounds right. Oh, yes, because uh, in the set, there is uh, repetition is not allowed. You cannot write seven twice. You cannot write uh, minus seven twice in a set. Are you getting this? In a set theory, that yeah, they okay. must be distinct number. The repetition is not allowed. Only the one time okay. is written. So from here, we can say about that these, these three choices will be eliminated automatically. Why? The reason is this: uh, these two uh, statements will be uh, what we can say, these two options. They both are same because they, these are not distinct element. Both are negative, once again, the same. So we can say that out of these four possibilities, uh, two must be eliminated. And uh, right. this third one, the fourth one, is automatically eliminated. We are considering the statement first. If we are yeah. combining the statement first, their product must not be equal to zero. So this third one, that is looking, uh, what we can say, eligible for the given condition. Yeah. That because we can get the product negative. Uh, we can get the product not equal to zero. Uh, we can get the distinct element and we can fulfill this equation also. Their modulus values are also equal. Am I right? Yeah. Their modulus values are equal. They are distinct. Their product is not zero. So this seems to be the most suitable answer that these must be just like that. Anyhow, look at this. Before we conclude that statement two is not sufficient. Okay. So from okay. here, this statement all alone is not sufficient. Why it is not sufficient? Because this is giving this way, uh, the distinct elements are not there. The, these are the same. And this is also this. So when we are considering this statement all alone. So this is not fitting. The somebody can take both the positive seven, somebody can take both the negative numbers x and y, and someone can take zeros. So right. all these possibilities are not matching to the wording of the given question. So before we conclude that statement two is not sufficient, not sufficient at this time, we will have to say, take a look at all the data available to us about these numbers. These numbers are all distinct integer. So one thing is that whenever we are talking about X and Y, so whatsoever we are thinking about X and Y, so we will have to keep this thing in mind that these must not be the same. These must be distinct integers. Am I right? Are you getting this? Right. So yeah. whenever you are putting the value of X and Y, so these must be distinct. They must not be seven, seven. They must not be negative seven, seven. They must not be zero, zero. They must be distinct, one thing. And okay. the other is, if X and Y have to be distinct, one has to be positive and the other negative. Am I right? So this right. team, look at this red line. These red lines are clearly stating that if you are looking for the condition where their modulus values are equal and at the same time they must be distinct, then you will have to say that one must be negative and one must be positive. Because if you are okay, keeping yeah. the numbers positive and negative, you will get the absolute value same because the numbers are same, their magnitude will be the same. And at the same time, you can also fulfill the condition that these number must be distinct. Am I right? Yeah. Are you getting this? So red line is just the clue to the solution that these must be, one must be negative and positive. And at the same time, they must be also equal in their magnitude. What I mean to say in their magnitude, in their absolute value, in their modulus value, they must be equal. And that can only be 
that one is the negative of the other. What I mean to say, if you are taking x is positive, then the y must be the same x but the negative sign. Okay. Right. So this is okay. The next is therefore we can eliminate three possibilities. So I have told you already that out of those four, four possibilities, the, they cannot be zero, one possibility, they cannot be both positive, the second possibility, they cannot be both negative, the third possibilities. So therefore, we can eliminate three possibilities. Are you getting this? Are you with me at the, this time? What are those three yeah. possibilities? What are those three possibilities? Be quick. Yeah, what? that it's zero, uh, the product is zero, it's uh, both of them are positive and or both of them are negative. Oh yes, both of them are zero, not possible. Both of them are negative, both of them are positive. So we have eliminated. So we have only have the fourth choice. That choice was at the number three. That was one was the negative and the second was positive. So we are just coming to that. So if X is seven, Y has to be minus seven. If X is equal to minus seven, Y has to be plus seven. Why I'm saying this? What is the justification? Uh, uh, well, okay. uh, it's because, oh, uh, yes. well, it's because they both have to be step to like different numbers or else it wouldn't like, you can't have two of the same numbers in a set. And also it just fulfills the, um, Second condition. Fulfill. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What you are saying. So let me just uh, tell you in a proper way. That is there. If you are just selecting this possibility, they, their absolute value is same. Am I right? If you yeah. are thinking about these lines, these numbers, their absolute values are same. Am I right? Absolute mod yeah. value, modulus, their modulus are same. And at the same time, their product is negative. Am I right? If you are multiplying these. Yeah. These numbers, the product is negative. And the third condition okay. is that uh, the product is not equal to zero also. That is the first condition, first statement. Right. Their product is not zero. Their product is negative. Their product is not zero. Their absolute value is also same. Are you getting this? Yeah. Uh, the fulfilling all the condition. These are the distinct number, number one. These are distinct. Yep. Their product is negative. Am I right? Their yes. uh, um, product is not equal to zero. Fourth one is their absolute yeah. value is same. Their absolute value is same. Their mod value is same. Minus seven. When you are taking the mod of minus seven, that is equal to the mod of plus seven. Am I right? Yeah. So all the four conditions are satisfied if you are taking one negative and one positive of the same number. So they are distinct because plus seven and minus seven are distinct. Their product is not equal to zero. Their product is also negative and their absolute value is same. So four conditions are satisfied in this way. So from here, did we get an answer? Look at this. Yes. Four of the six numbers are positive. Two are negative. Okay. Can you recall this? Okay. Uh, firstly, yeah. you were given the three positive and the one negative and one more negative from this supposition. So we have two negative numbers. Statement two is sufficient. So what we can say that statement two is sufficient. Choice B is correct answer. Are you getting this? Out of those four options, yeah. A, A was that the alone A is sufficient, B is alone, second statement is sufficient, the C is neither both are sufficient, uh, the next option is either both are sufficient and none of. So this is B is sufficient because if we are taking the modulus value equal to zero, so we can fulfill all the conditions by just taking the modulus value of two numbers equal because these can be negative or positive. So in this way, the choice is B. Are you getting this choice? Uh, that is choice. Yeah, I'm getting all, it. all those choices are same for each data. 
sufficiency or deficiency questions. All the statements are, uh, the okay. two statements are given. First is the choice is the A, uh, first statement is alone true, the second uh, is correct, uh, both are correct, both are not correct, neither of them will be correct. So this is, these are the four or five options. So choice B is correct answer. <clears throat> now let's see, from a data sufficiency point of view, what we have done is enough. What I mean to say that we were looking for the justification of the statements that we will have to look, uh, uh, we have to select the sufficient uh, statement to proceed on. But if, okay. <clears throat> had it been a problem solving question, the required prob probability is if uh, you are asked just to find out also the numerical value, how can you will solve the number of ways to select the positive numbers? multiplied by the number of ways to select a negative number and the number of ways to select two numbers. What I mean to say that is, that is the next stage. What I mean to say, if you're asked to calculate the probability of this question in numerical value. So what you will have to do, the number of ways. So here you will have to recall the combination, right? N, C, R. Right and combination, but I mean to say that uh, how many positive number. So what I have just told you that we have only two negative number and uh, the four other four numbers are positive. Am I right? Right. So number of ways to select a positive number out of six and number of ways to select a negative number out of four. So six combination two, six combination one. And here we also select the only two negative numbers are there in the set, am I right? Right. And the number of ways to select two numbers. So out of those six, so how it will be, that will be just like that, am I right? Can you read this? Four combination Wait, one. What is this? Oh, this, this is the probability times, multiplied yeah, okay. by four, two combination out two of combination one and six are total numbers. Then, yeah. Okay. Uh, le let me just say uh, a little uh, what we can say if you are just going to write in this way that the set was just like that. That was two and uh, then four and then six and then minus eight and then this was x and this was y so these are all the numbers can you see all these numbers uh yeah so here we have decided that this may be negative or positive am i right right so if we are just putting any one of these negative. So how many negative numbers in this set? Uh, one. Two. Oh, wait, so no. Uh, two. 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 And how many positive numbers? Uh, one, two, three, four. Four. So that's why four, and we will have to select one number just to get the product. So four combination one. Four combination one from here to one. select the positive number and multiply, you will have to multiply the second number, then take neg one must be negative number. So two out of, uh, one out of two. So two combination C, two C one, okay. two combination one. And total, as you know, that divided by the total outcomes, we have six total numbers and combination two, we will have to select two. So we can get the answer. And I'm sure that uh, you know how to get the combination uh, for n, c, y, yeah. r, n pictorial over n minus r pictorial. So this is all about that. We will talk about the combination also. A full-fledged uh, presentation will be there just to explain all these combinations that four, c, okay. one. So this is all about uh, what we can say that was the topic of the day and we have just uh, concluded about the data 
sufficiency and all about their the probability and the properties of the numbers so we will continue that i am hopeful that uh, you are now after having a break you are fresh and more energetic yeah. so you will come to your own just to uh, take your time just to put the pen and paper together just to solve so many other problems so i will also we will be attached with the what we can say on the uh, whatsapp so i will send a little bit yeah. problem and you will have to solve that and you will have to work out and you will have to resend me because uh, you will have to cover a lot of things so that's why i will just uh, put these question to you these type of the question where you can take your time and you can solve and you can resend so this way we will continue this okay. and uh, definitely uh, once again i am looking for that outlines that we should just uh, talk about all those outlines first that is the two prong beneficial one is that we when we are talking about uh, those topics which is the outline of your syllabus also so you will get the double benefit one is that uh, you will uh, revise the school syllabus what i mean to say if there is a problem so you will get the new ideas to solve all those problems and the second is that we will attempt all those question regarding act and sat questions so first we will solve those are you getting me what i am saying yeah uh, yeah the outline the underlying statement is that if the same thing you are studying over there on the online class or whatsoever and the same we are repeating over here in a other way so you will get the combination that if you are talking about the probability trigonometry or whatsoever over there in the school or online classes so once again we are talking about those things here so you will get all the things right. clear if you have any ambiguity over there if you are getting any problem uh, over there so we will solve that problem in a way what i mean to say that we have a typical mcqs type of the question but uh, we are not just putting the question in a sense that just select this one uh, so you are saying a so i am saying b b is the correct answer okay let's go move to the next we are not doing that yeah. we are just learning the logic we are just making things together we are just uh, learning in this way that if these type of the problems are there in the school or in anywhere so you will have the complete road map complete uh, mind mapping to tackle these type of the problems so that's why if you are getting all these things so don't otherwise this was a question of just a second i sh can show the statement and i you ask that what is the choice you say the choice is d i am saying no choice is b okay move to the next and how the b is yeah. so in this way we can solve 100 question at that time but that is not uh, uh, right, what right. we can say the fair uh, way because if you are just talking about a and b then just look back and the answer and you are not uh, knowing what is the logic why i am saying the b statement is true a is not true or c is the, what's wrong with c so that's why we are learning in this way just to tackle about all these yeah. type of the questions so uh, if there is a possible so you can you must send those outlines also that will yeah uh, about school them. starts up tomorrow so i'll okay, probably okay. get this okay thing. okay yeah. okay so thank you very much so this is the time to say allah office take care of you all right and yourself and the people around you so allah all right office. allah office. Allah office.